Hi, I'm Dr. Mark Reynolds, and I'm going to help you sing and perform more like the top artists around the world. I'm a professional voice teacher, performance coach, and opera stage director. Let's learn from Britain's Got Talent with Charlotte and Jonathan performing the prayer. This is my opera Sunday selection today, and it's kind of a trick selection. We'll talk about it later. For now, let's go. Question number one, is this opera? Answer, no. Why is it not opera? Well, it's not opera because it doesn't come from an opera. <laughs> now, it, I realize that's a trick question because yes, the singing he's doing, we do associate with opera. That's a sound that we hear when we hear opera singers sing. Does that mean this is opera? No, this does not mean it's opera. It means that it's someone singing with classical technique. That's singing in an operatic style. But that doesn't make this opera. I know I'm playing semantics. I'm kind of being... And it's slightly obnoxious. But just wanted to throw that out there. A few things to learn here performance-wise. He screwed up at the beginning. He made a mistake. Did he let that stop him? No. Does that mean he's bad or that it's not okay or that the audience won't forgive him or that it ruins the whole performance. Definitely not. It doesn't. It means it's a live performance. He's human and he made a mistake. But what's awesome about it to me is he just shrugs it off and nails it. He looks at his partner. She gives him the thumbs up. You can do this. And he rocks it. So amazing. Why would we say his sound is one that we would expect to hear with opera? Well, we'd expect it because the vibrato is consistent. The sound is really consistent. Lowered larynx, which is creating this richer, fuller sound that you're hearing. He's really releasing that jaw, which is again enhancing this rich, full sound. And it's a really consistent sound across the entire range, which is also really huge for opera. Are we hearing... Are we hearing a lot of that brightness and ping that's going to help it carry over an orchestra? Yeah, we're hearing some. And I think we're hearing enough that tells me that I think he would do very well singing opera. And I hope he, since this video, has gone on to do that because I think he would be exceptional. The other thing that's really cool is if you listen to her voice, she offers a really cool counterpart to his voice. Her voice does not sound like it's comfortable in the opera. Her voice does not sound like it's comfortable or stable in that operatic sound. You'll notice she starts trying to keep that old position, keep it warmer, richer, darker. And then it kind of keeps mutating towards that app space, that more pop-like sound. Less prominent vibrato, brighter, more ass-shaped instead of his uh-oh-shaped. And consequently, it has a more pop sound to it. Luckily with this song, that's kind of expected. There's usually a pairing of kind of a pop sound with an operatic sound in this song, and so it works great. I think the trouble is here because she's young and she's kind of trying to straddle these different voice types, and I'm not sure she's made the clear decision of where she's singing operatically and where she's singing in a more pop style, that it kind of throws her for a little bit of a loop. And it sounds a little inconsistent and a little unsure. And, and consequently, there's a few things that suffer a little bit there. But again, our attention right now is here's on him. This whole video was made to support him. I think she says earlier that she's doing this to try to support his dreams. What an amazing friend to be there with him doing this. And for all intents and purposes, I think her belief in him is well-founded. Okay, yeah. 
we have the bright ping in it. Sorry, just hearing that again, that growl, that bite, that bite in it. That's right up. That's right up there. Nice baritone, rich sound with that bite. That's gonna cut. Mm, so gorgeous. You'll notice even at the top there, he's not pushing it. He's not forcing it. He's just opening and getting out of its way and letting that sound come out really super consistently. Gorgeous, gorgeous singing. So for her, there's a few moments where I think her nerves get her and she gets unsure of herself and second guesses. But the other thing you'll notice is her voice gets a little unstable when she goes to this oh place. As soon as she relaxes in, it goes to that more speech-like place. Bing! It's right there. It's gorgeous. And she really does have a gorgeous voice. I don't mean to sound like I am downplaying what her singing is. She's just displaying some really common things I would expect at her age and in her voice type. And the comparison between the different styles that she's kind of trying to manage and his singing really display the difference between pop and opera really well. Notice at the top there, how he thins it out. He really kind of puts it up in the sinus ring place and doesn't try to keep that bigger heavier richer sound he lets it thin out get a little brighter even a little more add in the back that lets him get into that higher register and still make it sound easy that's a more tenor like placement where before he was singing more with a baritone bass kind of configuration of the vocal mechanism there and in this moment all he kind of switches into a tenor kind of configuration really interesting fascinating <laughs> Now, what I want you to notice is what happened when he went to that high note. What did it look like? What did it look like in that jaw? What did it look like in that upper tooth smile? What did, if you had to imagine the shape he's making here in the back, the consistency of breath, you could hear it as he kind of slid up into that note a little bit. He hooked into it. You could tell that he was keeping that breath flow consistent all the way up. And he was keeping that feeling of slide up to the note and not just stopping and starting and punching the next note. He's keeping that breath flow consistent. And he, at this end, he didn't go into this tenor configuration. He really kept a more baritone bass kind of configuration where that oh, uh, was more in place there, which kept it richer, fuller, kept those TAs more engaged, kept those thyroarytenoid muscles more engaged, which gave us, gives us that beefier sound. And wow, what a gorgeous sound. I mean, sometimes I watch these shows and you get someone on that's kind of singing operatically. Everyone goes nuts because it's kind of unexpected and it, it's cool and it sounds different than anything else. And usually there's a kind of sad story that goes along with it. This is legitimately a gorgeous sound. I mean, this is gorgeous. Really, really gorgeous. Is it clear that he's not outperforming all the time, that this is relatively new and it's terrifying for him? Yes, it is. You can see his hand shaking. You can see these little mistakes and bobbles where he's second guessing himself. And that's totally common in a young performer. But guess what? His technique was solid enough. He hung on to the sound he knew to make and rocked it. Oh, so gorgeous. Absolutely love it. So much to learn here from both of them. Love the performance. Love the support they had between the two of them. 
really, really lovely. What can you learn today? First, mistakes do not kill a performance. Yes, we want to practice and work so we have as few as possible because yes, they are distracting. But what really matters is being genuine, being authentic, and making the most efficient, beautiful sound you can and offering that gift to the audience and accepting it for what it is. If you want a voice lesson, a performance coaching, or want me to work with you or your group to help you sing easier, perform at a consistently higher level, book a time with me at mrperformingartstudio.com. I look forward to working with you online. Thank <laughs> you.